explain my routine and y'all each need to have your own personal routine and it can be a variation of this so uh, I, I had two different places that I did a lot of work on this side of this line is called the office so when my caddy was out there with me he'd set the bag down right here and in the office we make decisions so in order to make decisions you have to have facts so what would be some of the facts here? Yes. Pardon? Yardage. Yardage is one. Wind. Uphill, downhill. And based on those things, I'm going to make a decision on the club. So I make decisions in the office. And if you can't make a decision that you can commit to over here, then don't leave here. By the time you step across into this side, I call this execution box. We're going to execute the decision that we made back there. But if I step over here and I'm still thinking about something that was going on over there, can I hit the shot? No. Now, how often do y'all do that? Too often. Too often. That's right. You want to be a better player? Never do that again. Never. Now, here's the next thing. We talked about club selection in there. This is a perfect example. Hitting too little a club here is not really a good idea, is it? But see, that water made the decision for us, not the way we play golf. See, if that water wasn't sitting there, then it's not as penalizing if we make the wrong decision. But in our mind, it's just as penalizing. Because we chose the wrong club. And, our, and we know we chose the wrong club. The water just didn't make us pay a price. So here's the truth. Something that I did my whole life, I hit it at the top of the flag. Anybody ever heard that? You've heard that before. Mm -hmm. See, some people, they're looking at the hole. I'm looking at the top of the flag. If I look at the top of the flag, I'm hitting enough club to hit it to the back of the green. If I look at the hole, I'm hitting just enough club to hit it to the hole. So, say looking, do you mean before you grab the club, but you put your distance, or you see it when you're going? When I get over there and I'm looking down there, I'm trying to hit it at the top of the flag, not the bottom of the flag. That's a distinctively different shot than hitting it at the, the bottom of the hole. So, you know, and then from here, the other things that I really made up my mind, if the pin was on the back left side of the green and the tee was stretched all the way over here, it's a game of angles. So I gave myself the best angle. So always pick the best angle, whatever that is. Too many people lazily go to the tee, they go into the center of the tee and they hit every shot. No good player on the planet does that. That's lazy players that do that. Uh, one of the things that I showed the other group, and I didn't bring a, uh, can I borrow your book there for a second? Y'all are all gonna have to come around here to look at this. Anybody ever shoot a shotgun? So you know all about patterns and shotguns and everything else? Well, your golf game is similar. The better you get, the better the pattern will be. So, so that's basically what a shotgun pattern would look like. So this right here, when you're shooting sporting clays, is the one that makes powder out of the clay target. But occasionally we nick it and it just bumps a, cor a corner off of it, and that's the perimeter shots that do that. Well, your golf game is very similar to that. So you, when you're really on the money, a lot of your shot pattern is like this. But you've got these outlaying shots that still come into your shot. So, for instance, if that target, if that pin was on the very right side of the green, let's move it 10 feet from the right edge down there. Where should I aim it based on this? 
left of it. That's right. Okay. Because here's where I've got to aim it. To where this shot right here. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. I didn't know it was a... Is there something on my shirt? No, it was an ant, but oh, I don't okay. know whether it was a... Okay. Well, anyway, uh, I don't want one of these shots to get out into the water. So I aim it far enough left that where my normal shot is, it's going to be 10 or 12 feet left of the hole so that my outlaying shot still doesn't go in the water. You see what I'm saying? This is called percentage golf, basically, is what this is. I mean, so when Harvey Pennick said take dead aim, he was not right. It sounded good, but it's not right. It's not the way we play. Now, there are a few times where you take dead aim. Last couple of holes and you got nothing left to lose, you take dead aim. But very seldom did we take dead aim. Sorry about that, but you oh, got a little shotgun you mind, pattern. You mind signing it? Oh, absolutely. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As long as you don't have a check underneath it. <laughs>